Global Broadcasting System presents... Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Sentence of death. Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. Ah, you're here. Good. Take the easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is, Sentence of Death. The very intriguing story of a conflict that proved that justice was not blind. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. Paul Remsen was elected to the Supreme Court bench by the people of his county in November. He was sworn in in January. And by April, he was already one of the most popular judges in the county. It was late afternoon. Court had adjourned for the day and Judge Remsen was in chambers, putting some papers into his briefcase. Homework, he called it when Senior Judge Graham Palmer walked in and sat down in the chair alongside Judge Remsen's desk. Uh, What's the matter, Graham? I'm glad you're still here, Paul. Have you heard the news about Sam Howard? Why, no. He had a stroke. Oh, good Lord. How bad was it? The doctor believes he'll be all right, but he'll have to rest a long time. Well, naturally, the longer the better. Yes, but in the meantime, we have the problem of what to do with Sam's calendar. I phoned Allerton County to send us a judge, but, well, nothing doing until the middle of next week. Well, now, if there's any part of Sam's work you'd like me to take over, huh? There is, Paul. A matter that's scheduled for tomorrow morning. Oh, of course. What is it? The People versus Martin Rivers. Ma Martin Rivers. Oh. I know how you feel about such matters, and I do it myself, Paul, but the governor has appointed me to a special board of inquiry. I know, I know. We start hearings the first thing in the morning. Uh, yes. Graham, I... I don't know if it's in me to send a man to his death. Even if the law says you must? But it's capital punishment, Graham. I've always been against it. But it's the law, my friend. And you've taken an oath to uphold it. Yes, but... There's... Martin Rivers was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree. The sentence of death is mandatory under the laws of this state. I know that, Graham. It's our duty to impose that sentence, whether we like it or not. Until the law is changed. Uh, give me a chance to think about it, will you? Of course. And if you should find that you can't go through with it... I'll resign from the bench. Nonsense. We need you. No, Graham. I'll either do it or quit. Paul? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Martha. Hello, darling. Hello. Uh, did you have an exciting day in court? Uh, yes, yes, pretty exciting. A big day, too, if those bulges in your briefcase mean anything. Homework? Maybe. Maybe? You sound like a very tired judge. Uh, let's go into the living room, Martha. I'd like to sit down. You're worried about something, Paul? Yes. What is it? Tomorrow morning, I've got to sentence a man to die. You? But you didn't have a murder case. It's Judge Howard's case. Howard's sick and Graham Palmer's going to be tied up with that special board of inquiry, so... Oh. Martha, I don't know if I can do it. Why? Send a man to his death. Tell him when and how he's going to die. Is this the man who was convicted last week? Martin Rivers? Yes, and you're worried about him. Uh, now, look, Martha, He please. killed another man in cold blood, dear. His victim never had a chance to defend himself. I know. But the state gave Martin Rivers every chance to defend himself. Martha. Didn't it? He was given a fair trial and convicted. Now, there's nothing for you to be concerned about. No, no. Nothing except my conscience. I order a man's death, and then I have to live with myself. But, Paul, the man was a professional gangster. Heaven knows how many other people he's killed. Don't you think he should be punished? Yes, I do. Send him away to prison for life. Take away all his rights and liberties. But what right have we got to take a life we didn't create? 
What right did Martin Rivers have? Well, he lived by another code, the underworld, the law of the jungle. Take what you want, kill or be killed. You don't mean that, Paul. No, no, I guess I don't. No one has the right to kill, no matter what his code might be. But where does that leave me? What do I do? It's very simple. You have a sworn duty. Yes. Maybe I took on more than I can handle. What do you mean? Becoming a judge, deciding for other people. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm too confused right now to even guess what it's all about. Of course, dear. Why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a while? No, no. Then I won't be ready for an hour. And a little rest will do you good. No, I couldn't rest, Martha. Well, try it anyway. I'll call you when dinner's uh, ready. Listen, dear, I could Go ahead now. All great men have to make important decisions, Mr. Justice Remsen. You're no exception. <laughs> Hmm? Oh, what is it, Martha? Stop thinking about Martin Rivers and finish your... I can't, Martha. How can you feel pity for a cold-blooded killer? Pity for Martin Rivers? As far as I'm concerned, he's finished. But he's a man, a human being. And I cannot pronounce a sentence of death. I cannot do it. But... Very well. What's the alternative? I'll have to resign from the bench. Paul. I know what the judgeship means to you. Mm -hmm. I know how hard you work to be elected. Please, please, Martha. How can you think so little of your life? Or of mine? Don't you realize you'll be called a quitter? Uh, Martha, I... I don't know anything anymore. I'm going out for a walk. Do you mind? No, dear. I don't mind. I've got to work myself out of this dilemma. I've got to know what I'm going to do, and I've got to know tonight. Judge Paul Remsen walked for a long time without giving a thought to where he was going. Then, as he went across Main Street, he had an idea. He got in a bus, and ten minutes later, he was entering a small cigar store in one of the less pretentious neighborhoods. Yes? Oh, uh, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, let me uh, have one of those cigars, please. Uh, right you are, sir. Uh, nice weather we're having, isn't it? Yes. I always say give me the spring. Not too cold, not too hot. It's better for business, too. Yes. Yeah, that'll be 30 cents. Thank you. Yeah, not too cold, not too hot. Uh, anything else, sir? Are you Mr. Herrick? Yeah, that's me. Say... I thought you looked familiar. You wouldn't be a Judge Remsen, would you? Yes. Well, what do you know? <laughs> yeah, I was one of the majority that put you in office. Uh, Mr. Herrick, <laughs> you were the foreman of the jury that convicted Martin Rivers of murder in the first degree. Yes, sir. That no good gangster. Uh, he's coming up for sentence in the morning. The uh, death penalty. That's what the law says. Uh, yes, I know. How do you feel about sending a man to his death? How? I'd like to know. <laughs> That's a funny question, Judge. Uh, coming from a judge. Uh, forget that I'm a judge. We're talking man to man. I uh, don't get this, Judge. Tomorrow morning, a human being will be sentenced to die. In anywhere from six weeks to six months, depending on whether he appeals to a higher court. He'll be dead. Yes. Yeah. You're partly responsible for doing that to him. Oh, now, wait a minute. Are you trying to make me feel like a murderer? Oh, no, no, you're not a murderer, but do you feel now, a week after the trial, that you had a right to condemn another man to death? He was a killer. All right, but suppose, Mr. Herrick, you'd met Martin Rivers right after he'd committed the murder. Would you have killed him? Say, what are you after? Would you or wouldn't you? Judge, would you mind Please, telling me... Please, Mr. Herrick, I've got to know. Okay. The answer is no. I wouldn't have killed him. Uh, that is, uh, not unless he tried to kill me. Oh, but he didn't try. Now, look, Judge, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm a member of society, a decent law-abiding citizen, and I pay taxes to see that lawbreakers like Martin Rivers get what's coming to them. 
I don't want him around. Well, life imprisonment would have done the same thing, Mr. Harris. No, not to my way of thinking. The fellow that killer shot didn't get a life sentence. He's dead. Now, maybe he was no good either, but that's got nothing to do with us. The law says that anyone who premeditates murder is... A... What am I doing telling you about the law? <laughs> oh, that's rich. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Judge, but it, it just struck me funny, that's all. Me telling a judge about the law. Mr. Herrick, it may not be as funny as you think. All right. You want to know how I feel? I think I can tell you. I've got no regrets about Martin Rivers or any other killer that's got to die. When I took the oath as a juror, I promised to keep an open mind and to bring in a verdict based on the evidence. Yes. That's exactly what I did. And I voted guilty on the first ballot. Now then, does that answer your question, Judge? Yes. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, good night, Judge. Uh, drop in again sometime. I promise I won't start telling you about the law. <laughs> Me telling the judge about the law. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good evening. Hello, uh, Dr. Benjamin. Paul, Paul Remsen. Uh, forgive me, I didn't recognize you. Uh, that street lamp behind you and my old eyes. Uh, come in, won't you? Thank you. Uh, uh, how have you been, Doctor? Oh, as well as an old man can be. But you, Paul, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, come into my study. I was just in the midst of writing Sunday's sermon. Oh? Uh, but that can wait. A sermon can always wait. So few people take it seriously. So, make yourself comfortable, Paul. Yes, thank you. It's been weeks since we had a real visit. Being a judge keeps you pretty busy, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, does it also leave you uh, no time for happiness? Hmm? You seem depressed, my boy. More uh, confused than depressed, Dr. Benjamin. Mm, tell me about it. I, uh... I've been given an assignment... A man's life. A criminal. He was found guilty of murder. I see. Oh, it's my duty to sentence him tomorrow morning. But I... F you find that you can't do it? I can't make up my mind. Well, it's difficult. I know it's my duty to pronounce that sentence. The man committed murder, cold-blooded, premeditated murder, and the law is explicit... But still, I can't get it out of my mind that in sentencing that man tomorrow, I'll be sentencing myself. Why? My principles, the code of a lifetime. What right have I got to order the death of another man? Well, the law gives you that right, Paul. As a man, Pastor? Do you uh, want me to answer that? Uh, no, no, it's something I'll have to decide for myself. Then why did you come to me? I, uh, I want to talk. And I don't know where I can talk more freely than before you. I want to expose both sides of the case to myself in words that I can hear. There are two sides, Doctor. You know that. Well, there may be. Now, I'm a judge. I took an oath to uphold the law. The whole body of law, including the criminal code... The Code of Crime and Punishment. By man unto men. Yes. But where did that law come from? Yes. It came from the Bible. Our whole concept of criminal law is based on the premise of an eye for an eye, a life for a life. Yes, that's true, Paul, unfortunately. But there's a higher law, a moral law. And that, too, comes from the Bible, my son. Yes. Thou shalt not kill. That's what I mean, Dr. Benjamin. Which law do I follow? Oh, I, I can't answer that, Paul. I am a minister. My way of living is different from yours. I've taken an oath, too. But it's an oath to uphold the laws of God. If I had chosen another way of life, perhaps the laws of man would be more important to me than the word of God. I, I don't know. But I admire you greatly. You have mercy in your heart for a man who had no mercy. Mm. That's good, my son. Whatever you do, whatever decision you make, I'm sure you won't be less of a man. Oh, I'm sorry I can't do more to help you, Paul. But your soul is your own. No one can keep it for you while you're on this earth. I know. 
thanks, Doctor. No, no, no. No thanks to me, son. Well, I uh, think I'll be going now. There's one more stop I've got to make. It might be the last. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry to trouble you at this hour. What do you want? I'm Judge Remsen of the County Supreme Court. I'd like to come in for a moment, if I may. Judge Remsen of the Supreme Court, but I... Please, Mrs. Dover. Oh, sure, sure, come in. I'm sorry, you see, I wasn't expecting you, and the house is in an awful mess. Oh, uh, please don't apologize to me. My daughter Mary went out and left everything for me to clean up. She always helps me, but tonight she... Judge, what do you want? Your son, Frank, was killed by Martin Rivers four months ago. You've come here to talk about Frank? No. I've got to sentence Martin Rivers to die. To die? Mother of... Well, do you think I ought to say no? You can't stop it, Mrs. Dover. The law makes it compulsory. If I don't do it, another judge will. He killed my boy. If... You could say no. If you could stop the sentencing, would you do it? You're asking me, Frank's mother? I'm trying to make up my own mind, and I must know how you feel. I... Oh, what good will it do me if that man dies? Will it bring back my son? Will it help me to sleep at night? Is that, uh, is that how you really feel? Well, will it? You would keep him alive, wouldn't you, if you could? Let him live? If you could. Well, why didn't he let Frank live? He killed him. But... but... All right, all right. Frank was no good. He told lies. He beat people. He was a gangster with a gun in his pocket. He slept all day and all night he was out... Oh, no, I... Oh, Lord. I'm... I'm sorry, Mrs. Dover. Oh, well, maybe he was a thief, too. But for that, you don't deserve to die, to be murdered. No one has a right to kill. No one, Mrs. Dover. Is that what you really feel? Oh, how can I say what I feel, Judge? I brought up two children. One's gone. One night he said to me, So long, Mama. And he went out. Then the police came and told me he was dead. A bullet. How do I feel now, Judge? Oh, who can say when there's so much pain? But do you want revenge? Do you want Martin Rivers to pay with his life for what he did to your son? Martin Rivers, he doesn't mean anything to me, whether he lives or dies. I don't hate him, though. He killed my Frank, but I don't hate him. I'm sorry for people that kill. That's how I feel when I'm not mixed up. I've lost my boy, but... Oh, no, no. I don't want to kill. I think that's how most of us feel when... we're not mixed up. Good night, ma'am. You've been a great help. Judge Paul Remsen went home and he went to bed. But he didn't sleep. All night the words he had heard, the opinions expressed by the different people, kept running through his mind. He couldn't sleep. The sentence is mandatory, Paul. It's our duty to impose that sentence until the law is changed. He was given a fair trial and convicted. That's more than the man he killed, God, Paul. He was a killer, Judge. I pay taxes to see that killers like Martin Rivers get what's coming to them. I did my duty as a juror and a citizen. My duty. Yes, Paul. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. But there's a higher law, a moral law. And that too comes from the Bible. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, what good will it do me if that man dies? I've lost my boy, but I don't want to kill. That's how I feel when I'm not mixed up. Your career... Now you want to throw it away because of some silly notion. How can you think so little of your life? You'll be called a quitter. It's your duty, Paul. The law, Judge. Our duty. Your duty, dear. Duty! Duty! What am I going to do? What? Well, Paul. I, uh... I don't... 
No, yet, Martha. Are you going to court this morning? Uh, yes. Well, that's something. It may be the last time. I'm going with you. Martha. Don't you think I should go? I'd rather you wouldn't. It's my problem. And mine? I promise not to interfere, Paul. Whatever you do will be all right with me. Will it? Don't you believe me? You understand, then? I think so. I hope so, dear. Now, let's go downstairs and have some breakfast. Uh, uh come in. Excuse me, Judge. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what is it, Henry? I just looked in to see if everything was all right with you, Judge. It's pretty near 11 o'clock. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, come in, come in, Henry. Uh, close the door. Yes. The courtroom's kind of crowded with lawyers waiting for things to get started, Your Honor. Uh, yes. Not that I give a hoot and holler about them, but we are now behind schedule, and that, that means we finish up late this afternoon. Uh, uh, did you see Mrs. Remsen out there? Oh, yes. Right in the first row with the spectators. Uh, do you want me to send her in here? Huh. Where's Martin Rivers? Ah? Uh? Martin Rivers. Well, they've got him in the detention room. He's he's waiting, too. Uh, well... Of course, he's in no hurry. <laughs> What's the matter, Judge? You worried about him? It's about him. And about me, too. Yeah. I sort of figured it was that business that was keeping you in chambers so long. Henry, how long have you been a clerk in this courtroom? Well, pretty near 40 years. Uh, you've seen many judges and many murderers. You've heard the sentence of death pronounced many times. Enough. Have you ever thought how you would feel if you had to pronounce that sentence? Uh-huh. Could you do it? Well... Maybe not, so long as I was me. I see. But if I was a judge, it, it wouldn't make any difference. Oh? Why not? Well, a judge isn't a man, Your Honor. He he isn't human. Oh, uh, Henry, is uh, this something new? Well, no, sir. It's as old as history. A judge has got no right to be human. And that means he's got no right to work with his heart. I see what you mean, but where would you draw the line between the man and the judge? That black robe you're wearing. That does it. Hmm? When you put on that black robe and go out there into the courtroom and get up on that bench, you stop being a man. You become that robe, the law, the symbol everybody respects or is afraid of. Hmm. Why do people have to stand up when the judge comes into this courtroom? The uh, symbol? The black robe? It isn't because they respect the man that's wearing that robe. Maybe they do and... Maybe they don't. That's a personal matter. But they stand up for the robe. They've got to. It's the will of the people. The black robe. And that's how you've got to look at it, Judge. There's nothing personal in what you do when you're wearing that robe. Why? Because you're not in it. Uh, what's that? Not you as, as Paul Remsen. What's in that robe is a book that was written down at the state capitol a long time ago. The law. That's the will of the people, too, Your Honor. But a man must be sentenced to death. Well, did he sentence another guy to death? Yes. And did he execute that sentence? Yes, but... Well, then there's no two ways about it. The book says he's got to die. And the book says the robe's got to tell him so. That, that's all there is to it. Yes, I know, but is it right? Is it? Well, ask the book and the robe. Well, <clears throat> Judge, uh, are you ready? Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. Uh, the... The, uh... The clerk will call the business of the day. People versus Martin Rivers. Bring the prisoner to the bar. Uh, would the counsel for this man like to say a few words? No. But the 
court realizes that counsel cannot say anything to affect sentence. But, Martin, I would like to say a few words to you. Uh, what, uh, Martin, I'm about to say isn't easy for me. I hope you'll realize that. And I hope you'll do me a personal service, and yourself, too. There's a chaplain at the state prison, a fine, understanding man. I've known him for a long time. Let him counsel you. Let him talk to you. And please, Martin, listen to him. He can do you a lot of good. He'll give you peace, peace of mind, and perhaps peace in your heart. What is it, Judge? Simon from the bench? You trying to soften me up? <laughs> okay, give me the works and let's get out of here. I know it's coming to me, and there's nothing you can do to change it. So throw the book at me. <laughs> Wise guy. Martin Rivers. You have been convicted by a jury of murder in the first degree. The sentence of this court is that you shall be delivered into the custody of the sheriff of this county at once, and by him delivered into the custody of the warden of the state prison, where one night during the week of May 14th you shall be put to death in the manner prescribed by the laws of this state. And may God have mercy on your soul. And may God have mercy on my soul, too. And so closes tonight's story, Sentence of Death. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Raymond Edward Johnson played the part of Judge Paul Renson. And the cast included Helen Shields, Maurice Franklin, Irene Hubbard, Bill Smith, Ed Latimer, and Murray Forbes. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is a crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very exciting story of a nightmare that was as real as murder. It's called Cupid Can Be Deadly. In the meantime, well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. Oh, yes. Here's something important. The horrible suffering and tragedy of a cancer death can be avoided in many instances. The American Cancer Society wants you to know that of all the people who die of cancer, it is possible to save from 30 to 50 percent. Protect yourself by getting a free booklet which tells of the seven danger signals and many other important facts on cancer. Address your request for this information to the American Cancer Society, New York 4, New York. The American Cancer Society, New York 4, New York. This program came from New York. Stay tuned now for another mutual favorite, Quiet, Please, which follows in just a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>